This here is a half scale model of a house made of stone masonry and mud mortar. Just the way they make in the mountains of Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Kashmir and Nepal. This is a one and a half story house. There is an attic above this timber floor. To make this house earthquake resistant, we have installed a band at sill level and a lintel level and it's made of weld mesh like this placed inside the masonry mud mortar in all the walls continuous. In addition there is a timber band just under the attic floor and on top of that of the attic wall we have a wall plate. In addition to this on inside as well as outside faces of all the four walls we have double 14 gauge GI wires placed vertically at half meter spacing and anchored to the walls with the help of similar wires which are installed right through the wall during the construction. All the vertical wires are anchored to each one of the bands from bottom to the top. The roof is a lightweight galvanized iron sheeting supported on the timber understructure. And the gable here is not a masonry gable, but it will be made of again a tin sheet of wood uh, which will be flexible and not vulnerable just like masonry. Now, this is built on top of a platform which has wheels and we have a one and a half ton pendulum. So, we'll be conducting a shock test here in which we'll be giving number of impacts using the pendulum to see, to observe how the house performs in this crudely simulated earthquakes. I am. We have just uh, concluded the first shock table, shock table test on this uh, model uh, which has random rubble masonry in mud mortar with uh, containment reinforcement. Uh, in all we have given 14 shocks and uh, last 10 shocks uh, had the pendulum inclination ranging from 45 degrees for the first 8 shocks and then the last shock was uh, had the pendulum at 60 degrees. Uh, as you see uh, the structure is still standing. It is not collapsed. So as far as the safety of the occupants is concerned, it is definitely safe for the people who would have, would have been occupying the structure. Damage is extensive but as was expected. Uh, if you start from the top, uh, you have the 
unrestrained uh, masonry parapet of the attic, uh, which supports lightweight roof. And because the parapet is unrestrained, uh, it has suffered extensive damage. Uh, the damage is also caused because uh, it's a half scale wall and the stones could not be uh, broken to such a small size that we could put stones in flat position. So most, a lot of these bigger stones are in the vertical position. As a result, uh, delamination has taken place. As we come down, obviously the damage should be maximum as we go down. And uh, it is maximum in the lowest portion, below the sill, da sill uh, uh, band. As expected, the damage between the sill band and the lintel level band is minimal, which means that the bands have performed very well. Below the sill dam band, you see you know, fair amount of damage due to the outer, outer plane forces. And uh, this is, uh, once again, you know, there is delamination taking place because of inadequate uh, bonding between the inside and the outside wires. Uh, in the rear portion of the building, in some places, the containment reinforcement has separated at the top, which means that it was not anchored adequately. Uh, right here in the corner, right from beginning after the fifth shock, the damage had started to occur and the corners had started to come out. So as a precaution, we had added this reinforcement right here on all the four corners. And that seems to have worked quite effectively. Although gradually, you know, the, the stone has come out here. But in almost all the other corners, that reinforcement has worked. This uh, is the second model uh, in the part of our test series of uh, random rubble masonry in mud mortar with containment reinforcement. Uh, the most unique thing about this model is that it's two and a half story, very similar to the houses built in the hills of Nepal, Uttarakhand, Himachal, all the mountain areas. Now, in this model, we have incorporated the lessons we learned from the front, from the first test. And I would like to point out all different features which are there. One of the lessons from the first test was uh, that there was a lot of delamination at the base of the wall and also in the parapet at the top. So to prevent that, we have added these kind of wires in cross configuration, as you can see at the bottom as well as at the top. In addition also we had seen that stones were coming out at the corners because long stones were not used. So we have also added these additional wires at the corners to prevent any kind of stones ejecting out from the corners. Here, this E indicates the east wall. Similarly, N indicates north wall. On the west wall, there is W, and on the south wall, there is S, you know, which helps the documentation. All the H marks are for the headers or the through stones. So extra care was taken in this model to make sure that the stone masonry is of good quality, all the rules are adhered to, and through stones are installed at all the locations where they are required. The containment reinforcement, here the yellow color, are the 4 mm GI wires, and the red color wires are 4 mm aluminum wires. We are trying to understand the difference between the behavior of both these wires. Also in this model, on the, in the east and the west walls, the short walls, 
we have introduced windows to see how they will affect the performance of these of this structure The, you know, the test that we have conducted today on this model in which 14 shocks have been given, the end result is a structure with some damage. In short, the structure has survived large number of fairly high intensity shocks and uh, it essentially demonstrates that the random rubble masonry in mud mortar with containment reinforcement consisting of wires and uh, having multiple bands of weld wire mesh again in mud mortar can perform quite satisfactorily in uh, high intensity earthquake areas and uh, especially in the locations which are far away from the motorable roads where carrying in of steel and cement is going to be almost impossible. This technology has a great potential for building uh, earthquake resistant houses. Uh, one more thing I would like to add is that the improvement that we made uh, based on the observations of the first test uh, have very, very effectively uh, worked in controlling the uh, extent of damage. Uh, yes, certainly the better quality stone masonry is also played a major role in controlling the damage. But uh, I'll say that uh, uh, in future, if we have to build random rubble houses in mud mortar you know, good quality masonry along with the containment reinforcement and the weld wire mesh bands could play a major role in bringing safety to the people of mountainous areas.